Hey everybody, welcome back to Stupid Things Jory Micah Says, episode 27, live on YouTube. I'm your host, Norm, the Master's Dog Dunham, aka the Evangelical Norm. Yes, pugnacious and contentious is back. So, uh, Stupid Things Jory Micah Says is simply a podcast, basically answering a fool according to her folly. Jory Micah is a false teacher that is gaining more and more of a following on social media, particularly Twitter. And she deserves to be mocked. Bottom line. The same as Elijah mocking the prophets of Baal. Answering a fool according to her folly. Lest she be wise in her own eyes. She is so on top of everything to proclaim her own education. And her 11 years. And her master's degree. And all this stuff. And she's writing a book. And so on and so forth. I think it is very important. That we take the things that she says. And yeah, maybe the title could be a a little bit better, but it is. It's just stupid things that she says. And I address them live and I try to keep it short and sweet down to about 10 minutes because that's all the time that I'm willing to give to it. Sometimes I go a little bit longer. Today's might be longer because there's a lot involved in this. This was a a one tweet that I was going to put off for a a few days, but then it kind of blew up today. This is, this is literally, this is fresh. You can go over to Jory Mike as if she hasn't blocked you already. I have to follow her on a burner account because all of my main accounts have been blocked by her because I've find it very hard to read the things she she tweets and not say anything. I have to bite my thumbs. That's an insult according to Shakespeare, right? Um, and not respond to the stupid things she says on Twitter. Otherwise, I need to create a new uh, burner account and try not to get blocked again. So today she posted this. This was either this morning or it might have been last night. I don't remember exactly where it was. But she posted, it was this morning, single pastor in his 30s dates a young woman congregate in her 20s for a time. She is in love with him. He sleeps with her. Eh. She thinks he's in love with her too. He is bored. He uses her for time until he finds someone he thinks is better. This is spiritual abuse 101. So this is kind of a missed it by that much. All right. There's a whole lot going on in this that is is a problematic okay would i call this spirit i mean depending upon the situation it could be spiritual abuse it could be abuse by a pastor in his power having been a pastor i know that i've i had i had women flirt with me while i was a pastor that would never flirt with me in any other context i'm an old ugly bald fat guy you know my wife is a, a an amazing woman because she still loves me and, but I, I'm not, I'm not the guy that, that women are going out to bars to meet. All right. I'm not. And, and maybe a pastor in his thirties or whatever, and probably a little more attractive, but still being a pastor in a position of authority draws women. I mean, it's, and it's, it's literally a tactic of the enemy to try to disqualify you from your, which this, this scenario This guy, whether it's abuse or not, this guy's disqualified to be a pastor. And we'll get into that. But then there was some pushback by a couple of people. So um, I kind of just sucked up the entire uh, thread and and we're going to throw it in here. So um, this guy who is, I've I've read him. He's very liberal in his beliefs and and so on. So the fact that he's coming in and kind of going, hey, wait a minute. It, I think it took Jory by surprise because the two of them have interacted quite a bit. So he says, you think this is spiritual abuse just because just because they dated and it didn't work out. People date and break up all the time just because it ended up not working out for one person doesn't mean the other person was abused. And now this is true as well. I mean, 
I don't know a whole lot of single pastors. I've, I've never once met a single man who is a pastor as a single man. So everybody I met who has entered into the, the, the pulpit has been married, has fallen into the qualifications that Paul lays out in Timothy and in Titus, the husband of one woman, manages his family well, so on. It's been this kind of guy. I, I have not in, I know they're out there. And I, and I I would not say that it's a it's absolutely wrong for a single man to be a pastor. I would say it's absolutely dangerous because the enemy is going to try to sneak in, and this is a method he's going to use to try to get you and disqualify you from the pulpit. And then Jory responds back. Uh, I think I need to. Oh, massive power dif- difference. Just like a doctor should not date their patients, neither should a pastor. Common sense, friend. Okay, so she she was absolutely actually taken back by the fact that this guy and she's actually subtweeted a couple of times um, on this dude for defending the abuser. Okay, yes, there is a power difference. There is an authority difference, but a pastor and a congregant is not necessarily the same situation as a pastor and a or a doctor and a patient. There is definitely a different situation. You know, some people may just be coming to the church because that's a local church that they want to be in. You know, they're not actively in counseling with the pastor where he has the ability to exercise, you know, abuse of that authority in some way. It may just be a girl that, that came in off the street and said, hey, I'm going to check out this church. And they hit it off and then he disqualified himself and then it didn't work out. So, again, it, it, it's the situations are all sketchy and it, it really it it depends upon the circumstances so then she goes on here he goes on he says that's right they do have a power difference so does that mean the pastor is prohibited from dating anyone he might end up breaking up with later unless she is a minister well eh, problem she can't be a minister i know jory yeah you can you can come at me on that whatever she's not a minister bottom line not not there so continuing on and then she said the pastor can date anyone he, he wants that's not part of his church. So now, again, Jory, as a female pastor, pastrix, right, would you apply this same standard to a woman who is pastoring a church? I mean, not qualified, not, right, keeping all the, the uh, you know, reasons why on the up and up. But still, if, would you apply this to a woman? Can a woman be an abuser? That's a that's a good question that if I didn't want to get my, my account blocked, I would jump in there and ask. So she says, no, it's not always abuse. Um, it's literally, no, it's always abuse, she says. Um, it's literally illegal in 14 states. Now, this was a comment made on another thread she had put with kind of the same, same scenario. Um, somebody said this and finally did post a link and I went and looked at it. And the thing is, is that it's not illegal for a pastor to date a member of his congregation. If he's single, it is, if he's married, right? It's sinful. If it becomes a sexual relationship before the, he marries her, then it's sinful, but it's only illegal in the context. And every one of these that I looked at, if she is actively seeking him out for counseling for a spiritual issue if she's just there receiving the word and so on then then no it's not it's not a it's not illegal there's no law against a pastor who is single dating somebody in his congregation who is just there as a member of the congregation now it does get sketchy if he is uh if he's counseling her on different situation or whatever, and then she goes and, and reports it as abuse, then it would be illegal in that, in that context. So as he says, adult pastors dating adult lay people consensually is illegal in 14 states, and it's illegal regardless of which congregation the lay person is part of. Now, again, I just kind of explained that 
And she says, now this is telling. This is something that I was like, come on, Jory. I'm new to the legalities of this, so read the thread comments. What exactly are you arguing for? In your view, pastors should be able to woo-woo anyone they want in their congregation as long as they are of age and can consent. Way to destroy a church fast. So one, Jory is now admitting, I didn't look into any of this. I just told you that it was illegal without having actual any actual knowledge that it was illegal just because somebody came in and posted this on my my thread and I'm just going to buy into what they said. I'm not I'm not going to use that master's degree of mine and that that massive intellect and actually check this stuff out. I'm just going to buy it at face value. Bad form, Jory. Bad bad form. But then again, no pastors can't anybody language language alert sorry for those who are watching and reading um he can't that disqualifies them that person is no longer a pastor any more than you are not a pastor jory one you have no congregation to shepherd and two you're not qualified to be a shepherd according to the teachings of the bible so if this man is out there having sexual intercourse as a single man with somebody that he's not married to, he is not qualified to be a pastor. Whether it's abuse or not, that's a, that's a legal issue and that can be addressed. But this man needs to be removed from the pulpit. And she's saying the pastor should avoid dating their clients like all professionals, simple wisdom. Now, again, the, the whole thing is, is not... If, if there's somebody there, I would not say, I mean, the pastor is responsible for everybody in his, his flock, is a shepherd of everybody in his flock. This is why it is good for a pastor to be married and loyal and faithful, because then you don't run into this situation. But then if there is a single pastor, not everybody is his client. They're all receiving teaching and so on and so forth from him, but they're not there to receive uh, counseling or something where he is actively executing this authority in a sense. Does that make sense? And then this other lady pops in and says, just anyone who's attended their church within the past two years, this is who he can't responding to the guy who, who can the pastor. And then of course he comes back and he goes, that seems completely arbitrary, but at least it's the definition. It is completely arbitrary. This person just made it up off the top of their head. You know, like, 74.6% of all other statistics are made up on the spot. She just made this up. I also defined a 10. Does visiting once count? What if they attend a different congregation in the same synod? What about non-congregants seeking ministerial care too? Now, again, a non-congregant seeking ministerial care, a pastor should not, I don't think a pastor should be giving counseling to somebody who's not a member of his congregation. Again, that just, that, that opens up the doors for, for issues and stuff like that. So, but, and, and then again, this is the, the uh, instance in which it would be illegal. A congregant coming to seek counseling, ministerial counseling, that would make it illegal for him to have a sexual relationship with her, also sinful and disqualifying on the ecclesiastical side. And then this popped up there, and I'm just going to count this. I'm, I'm, people are going to call me mean, but I'm going to file this under things that actually never happened. For 2000, Alex, this girl is going to come in and tell me, and actually, she actually dated over dozens of times, like multiple dozens. She's dated 24 or more single pastors in their 30s. There's a problem. There's a red flag. There's a red flag. And that's not abuse. That is her having a different problem, and she needs to seek help for. But I'm saying, I'm, I'm calling BS on this. Because I don't think this actually happened. So, but again. So all of this to say, let's take a look at all this. One, single pastor having a sexual relationship with anybody in his congregation, no matter what, whether it's illegal, sinful, or si illegal, abusive or not, is disqualifying. That man is not qualified to be a pastor. He needs to be removed. And then, yes, if it, if it is a, an abuse situation, which does happen, I admit, there has been situations. Robbie Zacharias, we have, you know, I mean, he wasn't doing it with, with church members, but massage therapists. It is possible for men who many consider to be scholarly theologians, great men of God, blah, 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 to disappoint us 
and show that they were not what they were, wolves in sheep's clothing or whatever. But there are thousands upon thousands upon thousands of good pastors out there that are not abusing their flock. Jory's making it out that every white man that has that is in a pastorate is an abuser and blah, 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 blah. And that's wrong. And that's sinful. And that's vile. There are some amazing pastors out there that are loyal to their wives, that are amazing for their, their, their congregations and do wonderful things. And don't ever get into these situations. Again, Paul was smart in his way of saying, this is what a pastor should be. Did he absolutely rule out single pastors? No, but he said, this is what an elder should be. A husband of one wife, a good leader of his family. This is what a pastor should be. If you can do those things, then you are better equipped to pastor a church. If you can't do those things, you are not equipped to pastor a church. You are not qualified and you should be removed. And there should be wise elders surrounding that pastor that are willing to hold him accountable and ask these questions. When I was an elder in my church, multiple times we would sit down and just go. And a, a lot of times it came up when guys like Artaxerdia fell or other pastors, uh, you know, Tully and Chavidjan or any of these other guys who uh, at one point people went, they're, they're pretty solid dudes. And then they, they, they become sexually immoral and fail in that sense. And then pastors come together and their elders and go, how are you doing? How are you? And if you're going to be honest with them, please be honest with them. And if you're, you're struggling, pornography, whatever, anything else, walk away, step down, get counseling from your, your fellow elders and step out of the pastorate. But to insinuate that, that all of these, you know, and she's just hates white evangelicals and blah, 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 claims to be a pastor herself with no flock. That's, that's another episode for another day. And I've gone way over my, my time. I, I'm beyond 15 minutes, which I rarely ever do on this. But again, there was a lot involved, so I had to get into it and, and, and take it down. So, um, again, single pastors, if you're single and you're a pastor, you're going to need to in some way court or something to find a wife. But if you become sexually active with her before you're married, you're disqualified. Step down. Paul again says, if you're burning with passion, marry, marry that girl quickly. If you're a pastor and you're, and you're dating somebody and marry them quickly. So you don't end up disqualifying yourself as a, as a pastor. And other than that, I, I there's not a whole lot I can say about it. But again, the, the stupid things that Jory Micah says, sometimes they get so close to being right. But then she just botches the entire application of it. And, you know, again, if this guy is having sexual relations, he shouldn't be in the pastorate. And then we'll deal with, with the legalities and, and whatnot beyond that. But get him out of the pastorate quickly. Other than that, I don't have any strong feelings about it. Thanks, guys, for hanging out. If you haven't already, subscribe, hit the notification button, get all the stuff, share and like the video so Mr. Algorithm puts it out to more and more people. Um, if you want to leave questions, comments, or snide remarks, if got, comments are open. You can hit me on uh, Twitter at The Evangelical Norm or The Master's Dog, Norm Dunham over on Facebook, any of those places. As always, preach the gospel at all times. Use words. They're necessary. And until next time, Soli Deo Gloria.